sex is a pretty powerful drive. And obviously, I know it's a surprise to the world because sex has become strictly recreational, right? And with porn, a spectator sport, right? Sex actually, believe it or not, does have something to do with making more people. <laughs> So many kids out there right now today watching porn on their smartphones, on laptops, you name it, and they don't even know that it can have a negative impact on their life. And going into college, I began to notice that my, my drive for life, my motivation began to drop, that it was getting harder and harder to get turned on by girls in real life. Thousands of guys experience depression, anxiety, isolation, relationship issues, and erectile dysfunction. And upon stopping pornography use, they would no longer experience these issues. Many report social anxiety decreases, often significantly. Others report newfound confidence, and this is the most common benefit that guys report. Now, we've seen mild to moderate depression fade away. As for emotional numbness, most report that they feel far more emotion once they give up porn, or they simply feel more connections to others. And uh, my confidence came back. I could think clearly. You know, I could actually function out in the real world without freaking out, so. Sexual stimulation is our greatest natural reward. So porn, of course, is quite compelling. As soon as your dopamine starts to drop, you can click to the new image, or a new video, or a new genre of porn, and up goes your dopamine. If lesbian porn no longer does it, you can go on to girls with goats. Addictive drugs and food have limits to consumption. Internet porn has no limit at all. You can watch day in, day out, all day long, and keep your dopamine elevated. This can manifest as these, not being able to be sexually aroused with a real partner. Addictions begin with the same mechanism that evolved for sexual conditioning. That is wiring together everything associated with dopamine highs to form a pathway. And when this pathway is activated, it creates cravings for whatever it is. The number of receptors activated equals the strength of the message. But things change with overstimulation. You can see morphine, a 200% spike in dopamine, which is very equivalent to the slide Gary shown on sex, about a 200% spike in dopamine, similar to opiates. Dopamine does degrade receptors in the brain, whether it's cocaine or obesity, and it resets that pleasure thermostat of the brain. It creates a new normal. With fewer thermostats, we now have a different definition of what feels good, of what normal is. Cross-sensitization means that because dopamine receptors are downgraded, it doesn't matter whether it's sex or amphetamine. It's downgraded. There's cross-sensitization to each reward. What are the conditions and symptoms associated with low dopamine and low dopamine receptors? Well, low libido is one of them. Practice and thinking changes the shape of your brain. Addiction, they said, represents a pathological yet powerful form of learning and memory. I can't think of any model other than pornography that's a better neuroplastic model for learning. That we see atrophy in multiple addictions, whether they're natural or drug addictions, cocaine, meth, opioids, obesity, sexuality, and internet addiction. Internet porn has the ability to alter and shape some users' innate sexual circuits and these circuits have a wide influence over our behaviors. So usurping the pleasure reward systems that are important in survival.